Hey folks, Alex here with Dark Monkey Balls, coming at you with another video here. Uh, if you saw my last one, that was basic ball python breeding info, and you got to look at my pretty logo for the entire time. Uh, sorry about that, but uh, yeah, bear with me. In this one, we'll have pretty pictures! So just hold on here, like this, right here, here we go. The baby bumblebee ball python. Probably like the most classic double codon mutation out there for the ball pythons. It really kind of set the stage for seeing what you can do with uh, genetic combinations here. Uh, I think it was first produced by Kevin over there at Nerd. And when these things popped out, I mean, people were all over them. This is still today like one of the classic uh, morphs that people try to produce and get. But unfortunately... Look at it as an adult. Looks like ass. What the hell happened? Well, see, most pastel lines brown the hell out when most ball pythons brown the hell out as they age. If you've been into ball pythons for a bit, you'll notice that the baby you get does not stay the same. It uh, drastically changes colors as it turns into an adult, an adult. And most pastels do that. They turn really, really brown, except for a couple genetic lines that uh, stay pretty, pretty nice and bright yellow. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's the adult bee. That's kind of what happens, unfortunately. And it's something to keep in mind when you want to breed stuff, especially if you want it to stay looking pretty for its entire life. And it kind of brings me to a second point as to, you know, don't rush out and invest in certain huge, uh, you know, flavors of the month ball python designer morphs that come out. You know, last couple of years, the, the big thing was the desert ball. And here it is, you know, a baby desert looks really cool. Super bright. Uh, I mean, they do amazing things in combinations. And I'm not knocking the combos or the morph in general. But be aware that this is what it's going to look like as an adult. Uh, you know, the pattern is still kind of there. But it almost just looks like a fire or something. Uh, now, I haven't seen what the adults uh, adult combinations look like. Like the uh, Desert Enchi, which they call the Tiger, I believe. Uh, you know, but hey, with Enchi in there, that's that's a morph that gets better with age. You know, some things they get worse, some things they get better. Enchi looks amazing as as it ages. Uh, here's my baby Enchi, which is a different line from the standard one that comes out. Uh, was bred by a guy named uh, Dan Malroy, Malroy, something like that out here. He has uh, DM Exotics. He's uh, He imports and stuff. So he proved this guy out. Uh, he has an adult, and when I saw his adult, I thought to myself, you know, when he breeds these, I need to get one of these Enchis, because these just look stunning. And this is what he's looking like right now. He's at about uh, 800 grams, so not not too big, but he is breeding size. Uh, couldn't get him to go this year, but hopefully next season he'll go. And, um, you know, looking looking forward to what he combos out. Now, I don't know if Dan's comboed anything out yet uh, with these Enchis. I know he's got a lot of different projects with the ball pythons going on right now. And uh, as my voice cracks, because it's a special time in a young boy's life. But anyways, uh, he's got different projects and things going out on. You can Google his site at uh, DM Exotics on Google, and it'll come up. I know he's uh, changed his uh, company name, his show name that he uh, goes to the reptile shows with. He's got some other friends, other local breeders that he'll go to shows with and uh, have stuff for sale. But he's a really good guy and a really good dude to do business with if you want to go check him out. But uh, moving on. Uh, what we have here is one of the classic simple recessive morphs, and that's azanthic. And azanthic really just means it's me missing yellow pigment. So, I mean, these things as babies, they look stunning. That silver and black is one of the most amazing uh, colors I like to see in ball pythons. But as an adult, again, they just brown out, and they almost look normal. So, this is where you'll see people that uh, get normal adult snakes, and they're like, well, it might be azanthic because look at how light it looks, and blah, blah, blah. You know, like, I'm not I'm not one to uh, subscribe to that way of thinking, you know. Um, I like to buy my stuff from people I, I trust and I understand and I know and I know what I'm getting. So um, I'm not going to have any questions about what it is that I'm buying. But uh, that's just how they change. And, um, you know, even in something simple like this baby cinnamon, this is something I produced last year. It almost looks like a pewter. I mean, it's got that silver and black to it, again, like the Azanthics. And uh, it looks, I mean, this is just a normal cinnamon ball python. And you can see here what they look like as adults. Um, you know, still still nice. Cinnamon's one of those genes that I think is kind of underrated. Um, 
you know, cinnamons, black pastels. Uh, Brian Barczyk, uh over there at uh, BHB is working with uh, Mahogany's, which is kind of like an offshoot of these snakes, except the super form is 100% jet black. Like super cinnies will have the um, white bellies and they will brown out. The super mahoganies or the sumas come out just jet black. They look very, very wicked. So, um, that, you know, that goes on to say, do you, do you want to invest in something like a cinnamon, which is pretty cheap, actually. I mean, they make good combinations. Uh, black pastels also combo well. Uh, and it's interesting because while they're similar, they combo slightly different. I mean, a, a cinnamon and a black pastel, when comboed with things, will come out slightly different. And it's kind of like um, looking over here. This is a uh, banana ball python. And it's one of those, it was one of those, or it still is one of those kind of big gene co-dominant uh, mutations. And it's a tad expensive to buy. But, you know, you get those colors, and that's one thing. Do you want to spend a ton of money with a snake that's going to combo, and basically everything that comes out is going to look similar to this animal? They're going to have these yellows and these pinks, and you're not going to see a whole lot of pattern. But, I mean, they'll look great. You know, go for it. Or or step two, one above that, is the coral glow. And Kevin at Nerd likes to pump this thing out. Now, the difference here, I mean, they're they're pretty similar, the banana and the coral glow. There are some differences. But I think, for me, the biggest difference is the price. Uh, I don't know why, but Kevin is just charging, you know, a nutsack for these things. Um, more power to him. I mean, he's got one of the biggest names in the reptile industry. Uh, very well-known dude and a pioneer when it comes to combos. But uh, do you want to pay that kind of cash for something that's going to do, you know, similar combinations for it with an animal or whatever that you can get for cheap, like a, a banana? Well, relatively cheap. Bananas are cheaper. Um I mean, that's that's up to you. I mean, if you want to invest in something like that or a desert, uh, Champagnes is another morph that's out there that's, uh, you know, it was pretty big for a bit, but you, you breed it into stuff and you kind of realize that that pattern mutation is very dominant over uh, the combos. And along with that, there's also some side effects to it. I mean, you can't breed it to a spider. You can't breed it to a sable. Um, they get they get wonky. So it's stuff like that that you have to take into consideration. Or you can invest in, you know, something cheap like an Enshi that's going to pop up colors like crazy or fires, yellow bellies. I mean, these are very cheap animals that are going to be producing uh, awesome snakes for you for a long time. Or uh, there's a subtle one that's coming out nowadays called the Orange Dream. And it's a very subtle mutation, but when bred into stuff, it creates uh, pretty cool looking combos. So, I mean, there's all th sorts of things that you can go out there and uh, invest in and look at and see. But uh, just be aware that you know some of these colors they don't they don't stick around they're gonna brown out. Um, but then on the same token, some of these uh, get better with age. So it's a matter of research and understanding what's out there and what you can get and what's you know what you want to do if you want to go with bright yellows and colors. You know, throw Enchi into everything. Enchi and Yellow Belly are gonna keep your animals bright and yellow, and they're gonna get better with age. If you want to go dark, you know you can get cinnamons, black pastels. Uh, all sorts of different colors to keep the, bar the 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 darker tones in there. And, you know, basically for pattern, you've got spider, pinstripe, woma. There's a few things out there that, you know, just do pattern. So, uh, yeah, you know, go look, invest. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, click, pass it around, like VD. And uh, thanks again for coming.